I'm late. I've got about 20 minutes until I need to be out of here. This will have to do. I'm going to Germany, Frankfurt, to an exhibition which is called Formnext, which is like a huge gathering of everything additive manufacturing and 3D printing related. I've got to finish packing, but I'll give you a little hint to what I'm doing. This is a Bamela P1P. It's one of my favorite printers. This back here is one of the stepper motors. That's one of the motors that makes everything move. And this is also a stepper motor. That's to give you an idea of the scale of the thing that we're building. Okay, you seen the thumbnail of the video, you clicked on it, you sort of already know that I'm gonna build a really big scale model of one of those Bambalab P1P 3D printers. You see, a couple of weeks ago, Bambalab reached out and asked me if I wanted to build something fun on their stand at Forum Next. And essentially, the only requirements they gave me was a certain amount of space on the booth and they wanted to build something big using 3D printing. And I mean, everyone's been asking for a larger Bambalab printer, so I figured this was the perfect opportunity to give the people what they want, not only slightly bigger, but a lot bigger. Formnex runs over the course of four days, and with two additional days of setup, that leaves us with six days to build one of these, only with a footprint of two by two meters and a height of over two and a half meters. I mean, I want to build it so big that people can stand inside of it. As a quick disclaimer, before we start building anything, Bambalab is paying me to build this for them at this exhibition. They're also sponsoring this video and throughout it, you'll see me use the Bambalab machines to print all these parts for this large printer. Now, regardless of this, the Bambalab printers are by far my favorite printers I've ever used. The print quality is fantastic and they print really, really fast, which is a big part of the reason why we're able to do this because we're gonna print all the parts on location and although we have like 12 printers, I think, I've got to admit, I'm still slightly worried that there's just too many parts. Okay, we finally made it. And this is our huge pile of Bambi Lab 3D printers. Now, all of those will go into a print farm on the wall behind me. So the next step, I guess, get all of these in there. <laughs> That right there are 12 X1Es printing all at the same time, printing parts, printing parts. And as if that wasn't enough, we had three more. So now there's a total of 13, 14, 15 3D printers all printing at the same time. And the crazy part is all of these parts only make up about one and a half of the legs of the printer that we're gonna build. So although this is a lot of printing hours in a really short amount of time, I'm still a little bit worried that we won't have enough time to finish the whole thing. Fingers crossed, we'll check back in tomorrow. So now that the first round of printers are running, I want to show you something to give you a bit better understanding of the scale of this thing. So this is the 3D model I spent the last couple of weeks ahead of this event, 3D modeling. And although at first glance this might look like a regular P1P frame, there are a lot of different things that I've done to this model to give us a fighting chance to not only print it, but also be able to assemble it and having it to be strong enough to withstand the wear and tear of being at an exhibition like this. Now this whole model is actually based on the 3D file that Bamboo provides you can download for one of these in case you want to customize the side panels or an enclosure for it. And naturally, the first thing I did after importing it was scaling it up by 520%. And you'd think that's like 90% of the work done. But in reality, 99% of the work is still left. Because even at that scale, the thin sheet metal parts would still be less than five millimeters thick. And I just didn't think that that was gonna be strong enough at two and a half meters tall. So I had to painstakingly go and manually thicken all the parts taking extra care to maintain all the cool sheet metal geometries that you can see on the actual printer so that the frame would end up being thick enough to hold its own weight. I also ended up extending the whole thing by half a meter because I wanted it to be big enough so that people could walk inside of here without getting too large in terms of footprint. And the end result here is essentially a model that is completely different from what we started with, but looks pretty much the same. There's a ton of different small details and tricks that I did to make this actually work. We'll get into this later on. For now, the important part was splitting it up into segments that could actually be printed so that we could finally start on what would end up being being a way more crazy and time-consuming project than I had originally anticipated. Okay, morning after, the printer's been rolling all night. One, done, two, three, it's four, 
Five. Look, they're completely maxing out the build height. Six. Oh, one ran out of filament. That's my bad. Could have put in two. Another one. Also ran out of filament. Finished, finished, finished. Now for the last three. You're done and you're done. All of them ran all night. Not one single failure as far as I can tell right now. Not too bad for a day's work. It's bright and early. We're on our way to the fair. The show starts in about three hours. We're gonna set up the third run of printing and we're on to starting to print the fourth leg today. This definitely has a feeling of silence before the storm. Everything's just empty. <laughs> we got the Wi-Fi working today, which meant that restarting all those prints took about five minutes. <laughs> to be fair, I'm still a little bit worried just because of the sheer amount of parts. So last night we went and hijacked a couple of more of the bamboo printers. These awesome guys let me borrow another three. So we have three more finished parts. Okay. That was a pretty chaotic first day. But all this is essentially everything that we printed so far, and it will hopefully make up about three of the four legs. As you can see, there's no one left here. This place is shut down. Quickly realized that building something in the middle of the trade show, right in front of the booth where everyone wants to get around and ask questions, is easier said than done. So my plan right now is to sort through this entire mess and then we can finally start building the legs from the ground up. <laughs> Out of the three legs, on only one of them, I'd managed to print all the parts. I think I printed duplicates of two of the parts, which also means that two of the legs are missing some parts, which I'm not printing. Now, I'm currently lining up these initial parts with holes because they're going to be screwed into this base plate. This base plate, by the way, is just made up of MDF and plywood and it was made by the stand builders on super short notice, which is really lucky so I don't have to build this thing. Screw it down with some really big screws so that this thing doesn't go crashing down on the kid's head. You think 10 screws are overkill? Now, here's the way we're gonna attach these together. We're gonna bunch these wooden pegs that will hammer into holes on each one of the sides of these parts. So that now with matching holes on the other part, these should all pretty much lock together pretty solidly. But now I've got an extra trick. <laughs> which is gonna be one of these 40 by 40 millimeter aluminum extrusions just to make the whole thing a lot more stable. We'll go into the hole and all the way through all the parts. <laughs> That's not going anywhere. So for those of you who have a P1P at home, you might have noticed that the aluminum tubes and wooden pegs don't come standard. So after I had scaled and thickened all the parts, I added all the geometry that would hold all of those aluminum tubes. Oh, and a quick little side note. The aluminum profiles that I'm using are the same exact ones that I used to build this giant camera arm that I have in my workshop, which I've pretty much used to film all my videos since I built it. There's a video up there in case you haven't seen it. So after adding all those features and splitting everything into parts, I manually added all the holes for all of those wooden pegs, which by the way, are a fantastic way to join two plastic pieces together because of the grooves on the wooden pegs, they make it really nice and easy to get a really good press fit to hold everything securely in place. This is the piece that will hold the rod that is normally a stainless steel rod that will then hold the gantry. And yes, I'm gonna make a tool head and yes, it will move. <laughs> Uh, that was one full leg, and I'm laughing like crazy in an empty, huge hall. I don't know. Probably go home and sleep. And for the next couple of days, that pretty much turned into my daily routine. After assembling the first batch of parts and making sure all the printers were printing more overnight, I'd show up early the next morning to collect all the finished parts and restart a new batch of prints. I pretty much created one project for each one of the legs and split all the sections into individual build plates. Which is really when I started to realize how big this project was actually gonna be. I mean, just look at what happens when we go and import the top frame into a build plate here. It's quite clear that Bamboo Studio isn't set up to print stuff that's two by two meters. <laughs> I mean, just one leg was 10 full build plates. Each of the parts takes about 12 to 14 hours and consumes almost a full spool of filament. And those weren't even close to the biggest parts we were had to print. Check out this monstrosity. This is the corner pieces that are gonna hold everything together. This print was a full day, eight hours and 27 minutes. There's four of these. 
including full layer of special PLA support for nice surfaces because the inside surfaces here are a critical dimension for the aluminum tubes to go inside of and keep this whole thing stable and secure. So during the day, I'd prepare files and start prints as soon as printers became available. Got some more big boys. Which, for the most part, went pretty well. I mean, kind of. <sighs> Initially, it looked like I had two failed prints this morning. Turns out <laughs> I need to sleep more because both of them were just paused for some other reason. Either for running out of filament or because of a tangle, and I just removed both of them without looking. So both would have finished just fine. But by the end of day two, I was starting to get even more worried that we wouldn't be able to finish in time. Luckily, in addition to the four printers that Three Dimensionals already had let us use, the guys over at iGo 3D also just happened to have a full wall of bamboo printers that they also let us hijack. So the bit by bit, more and more parts were completed, and we can slowly and steadily start assembling all the parts for the top frame. <laughs> just sort of try to sneak way into a corner here and cut these old loop aluminum profiles to length. So far, it's been quite challenging to try and build anything, but we're making a lot of progress on the printing itself. Too much noise. We'll try in the parking lot. <laughs> All right, today's the day. It was pretty late last night. We didn't get to assemble the whole top frame because we had a few missing pieces. All those are now printed. So it's time to assemble everything and then try and lift the whole thing up and slot it in in one piece. And man, I've got to say, I'm pretty pleased with the fit of these parts. Most of them just... Uh, that's that. No, it's okay. Me too. Okay. Now the tool head is definitely one of my favorite parts of the build, but also by far one of the most complex. Luckily, Bamboo actually sent me the original files for the outside dimension of this thing, which I was able to use to create my own model, which looks the same from the outside, but obviously is meant to just 3D print and be assembled together without any of the actual hardware or fancy electronics inside. And just the tool head alone is 21 individual build plates, takes over 200 hours to print and more than nine kilograms of plastic. And again, the daily grind starts. By heading in bright and early, come on again. Tool head parts with what has now become my morning routine. Checking on all the printer. We started printing the parts with tool head. This is a multicolor print with the logo. And on the real one, this is where it would blow cold air onto the printer part. And I mean, I gotta say, I love the bamboos, but I have a feeling that that thing would have been slightly faster at printing our parts. <laughs> You know that saying you can get in anywhere as long as you carry a ladder? That's how I feel right now. Linear bearings. Nice. Luckily, we got everything printed just in time so that the night before the last day at like two in the morning, I was finally able to assemble all of those parts. So it's to say I was super tired the last day. But the fact that we could see the light in the end of the tunnel and that we would be able to finish this project just kept me going. And over the course of the last day, the last remaining prints finished. And we were ready to start assembling the final pieces. But before we get to that, I'm sure you're really curious to know how much time and how much plastic all of these printers actually put out over the course of this week. So not including any of the failed prints or any of the testing I did ahead of time, we printed a total of 101 full build plates over the course of the event. And the whole thing ended up taking 1,445 printing hours. 
printing a total of 82 kilograms of plastic, which is just an insane amount for five and a half days. All the parts were printed with 0.2 millimeter laser height with a 0 0.0 millimeter nozzle, and we increased the top, bottom, and external perimeters to five each. In hindsight, since we added all the aluminum tubes, that was probably a bit overkill, but I just didn't want to risk the whole thing cracking and falling over on some little child. At the most, in total, we had about 25 printers printing essentially 24 hours a day in a hot environment, a lot of the time with the door closed, printing PLA. Now, you might already guess that that is sometimes a recipe for nozzle clogs because PLA just doesn't like being that hot. And that happened a couple of times. Sometimes we were able to quickly fix it, sometimes we just didn't have the time and tools to do so. So would I still recommend these bamboo printers? Absolutely. Considering about 1500 print hours over the course of just a few days and just a handful of failures, I think that's still really good. I have both a P1P, an X1 Carbon and an A1 Mini. And they've essentially replaced all the other printers I used before. And since coming back from Form Next, they've now also released the new A1, which means that you can now get into multicolor or multi-material printing for as little as $560. So if you're thinking about getting one, there's an affiliate link in the description below. And by clicking on that, you also support this channel. Okay. Also, I just have to say a huge thank you to the entire Bamboo Lab team for staying super late <laughs> and helping you print parts literally all night and all day. Now, although it was quite stressful, all the parts did end up coming together just like I hoped. And with some great help from both friends and the Bamboo team, we managed to install the last parts at the very end of the very last day. By which time they'd gather a small crowd to see it being finished. And once we finally put the last remaining pieces in place, I even got a nice round of applause. <laughs> which I kind of awkwardly just walked away from after like two seconds. We actually did it. 10 minutes before, finished the whole thing. No, we definitely didn't get everything done that I planned, but I'm pretty far about how far we got. I'm especially proud about the tool head. It has everything from the fan to a spinning extruder gear, all the hot end nozzle, fan parts, they're all there. We even printed some multicolor prints for the bamboo logo and this I did back home, but I printed some of the warning labels. <laughs> you can see how close to the end we finished by the fact that they're already tearing up the carpets. <laughs> now I just want to show you some of the details that we did. Lead screw actually spins. And probably one of my favorite things is the step motor in the back here, printed with a bunch of different colors, multicolor prints for the screws. And the motor is actually attached with two scale M3 bolts that thread into printed threads in the top of the stepper. And I mean, I'm just so happy about the way this project turned out. I just want to say a huge thanks to everyone that helped out along the way. It was so much fun hanging out with friends and making new ones. And thank you so much to Bamboo Lab for giving me the opportunity to build something super fun. So all that's left to do is just disassemble the whole thing again. Hopefully they'll find a different use for it somewhere else. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.